Wow, we are live. What's happening, guys? And welcome to episode number 15 of the Coffee with Sam podcast. This episode is brought to you by Absolute Blankets. Now, Absolute Blankets, they basically get all your t-shirts, so cheerleading t-shirts, BMX t-shirts, motocross t-shirts, all these t-shirts you collect, gymnastics t-shirts from all your competitions throughout the years. You do not know what to do with them because you don't want to wear them because that's going to ruin them. So you want to keep the memories or well, absolute blankets has the resolution for you. If that's even a word that I need to use, they have, what they do is you send all your t-shirts to them, vest t-shirts, and they cut them out and they turn them into a big blanket. They even put a soft blanket on the underside for that smooth, soft touch to your skin. So absolute blankets are on Instagram. At, 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 at Absolute Blankets, and they're also on Facebook, Absolute Blankets. Find them and get your memorabilia t-shirts. I think they could probably do jumpers. Don't, don't quote me on that. But t-shirts, vests, I've got one with all my cheerleading t-shirts on, and they've made it into a soft, comfy, nighttime blanket for me to keep my memories, not just locked in a drawer, but in a blanket that I can see and use every day. Now, today's guest was my first ever guest I ever had on, these pod on the podcast. Welcome in, Mr. Rob Horton, a.k.a. Bear Drills. Roll that intro. What's up, boss man? Oh, oh he's got audio issues. There we are. There we in. go. He is in. Cheers. Welcome back to the podcast, Mr. Oh, he's got a coffee too. Coffee with Rob. Nice. Coffee with Sam. Yes. How are we? I'm very well, thank you. I moved into my new house. Um, last time when I was on, we were in the, the uh, sort of the halfway house. We're into the house. We're getting there. Um... Yeah, we're in a good place. Yeah, well, welcome back. You, welcome back. You are now, you were number one and you are now number 15. I know, <laughs> I was going to say that. It's been a crazy couple of months for you, hasn't it? So you're up to 15. We've yep. done, you've done world champs, you've done specialists, and you've done distributors. They've been great. <laughs> and also did a, I was doing a, do a, fun, a fun night Friday sometimes, like a Friday night special if I can, and I did it, um, I went live to Australia and America, two of my friends, and we chatted about, it was about life, but also cheer, but it was a bit more relaxed and well, a bit more giggles. So not really a coffee kind of affair? <laughs> no, there was a beer involved. There was a, there was a beer involved. <laughs> a beer with them. All right, okay. <laughs> Good, so you have had a very interesting couple of weeks. Um, the viewers and yes. listeners, if you don't know, Mr. Bear Drill was actually contracted COVID-19. So this crazy virus that you kind of think doesn't exist, but does exist, but shut down the world. But why did it shut down the world? You have someone in your ears or in front of you who has had COVID-19. Tell us I about it, Rob. <laughs> well, okay. Um, I kind of um, think that the way that we work and because we're coaching with people it was bound it was bound to happen to to to, to a few of us um it was it was rough i'll be honest it was quite rough i'm obviously lucky because um i'm okay and i'm you know recovering and, and whatnot um whereas other people haven't been uh you know as fortunate but it was it was tough um i've got asthma as well and so it was kind of like a, a bit of a double whammy really because it was getting to the point where it was affecting on, on a couple of levels with the, you know, with the ability to breathe. I was basically in bed for about three weeks, three or four weeks. And even then, when I was able to start doing things again, it was like just wiping me out. So if I tried to hoover, I had to like have a nap. It was crazy. So um, it, was, it, was, it was rough. Did the doctor say that due to your asthma is a reason why it could have like, because a lot of people are asymptomatic. Mm -hmm. So maybe you got it and then because of your asthma that maybe is why it ended up affecting you 
or did they say anything like that? No, so um, I did, I followed what the government advice was. So I stayed at home for as long as I could um, because of the, there wasn't anything, it's not like anything could have been done. The only reason you're supposed to go to hospital is if, it, if you can't breathe properly or that's what the advice was at the time. So I'd had it for a couple of weeks and although it was a struggle, it wasn't stopping me from breathing. And then towards this, the end, I felt like I, my asthma was playing up and I thought, well, I can't, I can't leave it. So I went and they did all the blood tests and they were, this is all in the space of about five hours. They did all the blood tests. They did loads of different things and, and whatever. And then they were, I'm in an area about whether they were going to keep me in. Uh, and then ultimately they decided that there wasn't anything they could do. Um, so they, um, they sent me home because if I'd needed to, you know, um, get air assistance and they would have, or breathing assistance, sorry, then they would have kept me in. But um, they, they, when they did all the tests and stuff, they decided that it wasn't, at, it wasn't actually the asthma that was the issue. It was just the infection. Um, and so they sent me home again. And then it was a, a few more, a few more days after that before, you know, things started to, to clear up and stuff. So yeah, it was a, it was a scary time. Um, but that was about now, a week. That was about a week after we did the podcast, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. So it wasn't, I was probably, cause I didn't feel great when I did that first podcast. So I knew, I knew I was getting ill, but I didn't knew I was getting, I didn't know I was getting that kind of ill. Yeah. Cause then, then I, um, I spoke to you after, didn't I? And I, I remember like laughing about it, joking yeah. about it that you got it and you were like, nah, nah, just a bit poorly. And I was like, but you do look bad, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to normal, right? Yeah. Well, you just, you just look drained and you looked like, do you know what I mean? Like I still tried to make you laugh. It was, I could, but. No, no, it's, no, it's fine. Honestly, I, was, it was, I thought I was just exhausted um, because we were, you know, we were trying to sort out the house and because we hadn't moved yet, but we were trying to sort out whether that was going to happen with, with the whole, you know, quarantine that was going on and, so it was all just kind of like quite stressful. And I just thought it was like stress related. And then it was just like downhill. And I, was, I just couldn't do anything. And then Kelly was like, I think you need to like go to bed. And then I didn't come out for two weeks. So <laughs> um, but now it's more like the, um, the, um, the chronic, it, I'm just always exhausted all the time. And I haven't, it's like I'm fatigued and I, I, it's like trying to find a way that I'm going to um, sort of, because I, I, I know, I'm normally, I'm, although, I don't, although I don't have the appearance of being someone who's quite fit, I'm fit in the sense that I can, you know, I can, I coach, I was coaching classes every day and I could run. Bro, just because we're holding a race. bit of belly fat don't mean we're not fit. Get out of here. <laughs> we're, not, we're not meant to have six packs and all those bulging muscles. Get out of here. Well, I've never had one of them, so. No, they don't exist. <laughs> no, I think, that, I think people draw them on. But, but I used to be able to run a mile quite fast, and now it's like taking me. So when I was running all the time, I could do a mile eight minutes, which was, you know, that was all right for me. But now I'm like 10, 11 minutes, and I'm crawling to the end of the mile. And so, so I know that it's impacted me. I know it's impacted me enough to have had an impact, you know. So they do, so, say, they do say that um, it scars your lungs. The mm. infection ends up scarring your lungs. and. I don't know deep about it, but that it can it can affect you forever. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I, as, I'm a bit like you. I don't know enough, but I do know that it can have a similar kind of impact to the inside of your lungs, like um, a COPD or a pneumonia might. So it might leave like certain scarrings that might make cardio a little bit difficult long term. Hopefully, that that will be something that we can kind of work out over time. But short term can. I can definitely feel it. So, um, yeah, yeah. Was you scared? Pardon? Was you scared? Um, I wasn't until I went to the hospital and they said they might keep me in because I thought I was on top of it and I thought I was doing everything I was asked to do and I wasn't doing anything I shouldn't have been doing. And so I wasn't scared until they said they might keep me in. And then I was like, all right, so there's enough of a concern here that that's even a question. I thought I was actually going to come in, get a ventilator for my pumps or just have like a ventilator and then go home. Um, and that's what I want. That's what I thought was going to happen. And then they started doing blood tests and they were, you know, and then there was like three or four nurses and I just thought, right. Okay. So it's a, <laughs> maybe a bit more than I thought. And, and then you came so out that, was, that day. I think it was being in control. That's what it was. Yeah. You, and did you come out that day? Yeah. So I went in and came out. 
and they basically said that I've been I had to keep doing what I've been doing and so I was kind of a bit like I know but I'm still struggling to breathe but then at the same time I was like they're sending me home though so that's yeah. that's good news yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's um, there was a, an American comedian called Michael Yo, and he he got it the early stages of it and uh he was talking about his experience on a podcast the other week and he was the same he was fine okay i'm staying in because not many people have got it so they need to like use me as a guinea pig type thing but then literally every day they were coming in with something different to try and try (laughs) on him because they had nothing to fix it and then it got to the point where he was like i'm gonna text my mom and my dad and say this ain't good but i'm scared and Mm -hmm. then he, but he wouldn't tell his girlfriend, so he was still texting his girl, well, wife, like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'll be out soon, I'm fine, just yeah. struggling to breathe a little bit. And, and he said it was, it, was, it was horrible. Like, I'm sorry, I know it's bad I joked to you when you, were, when you were lying in bed and I didn't see you for two weeks, and I thought, <laughs> is he dead? <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I think it was, it, was, um, it was Lisa from BGU text me and was like, have you heard from Rob? Because he's not posted anything for a good few weeks. And I was like, well, actually last time I spoke to him, he had COVID-19 and she was like, Oh, and I was like, maybe I should check. <laughs> check up on that guy. Maybe I should check. Yeah. Like, Honestly, I can't even really remember much time. Like it wasn't like linear. So I remember I binge watch like the stranger and um, the tiger King in like one day. Or it felt like one day. I think, just, I think you, can, you, you can do that anyway. <laughs> you can do that most <laughs> days now, can't you? Just... I, would, I, would, I would never normally just sit there and watch a whole yeah. TV series or something. And I can just remember sort of laying there like a beached well in my bed. And just sort of like <laughs> scrolling for the next episode of, of whatever it was. It was just, it was just, it was really heavy. Like I could just, I felt really heavy in my chest. And I was just like. Did you have all the temperature and everything? Or was it just the chest that got you? Yeah, so I was I was so hot. I was just so hot the whole time, and um, but I didn't think I was hot. And then I put it in. I'd be like, oh, all right, I'll go back. <laughs> I'll go back to the is that room. Beard, mate. Is that beard keeping you warm? That's what it is. Do you know what? That is, it hasn't um, affected the growth of that, has it? Do you know what? I'm loving the growth, and at the moment, it's got to the point now where I can actually straighten it with a beard straightener. Angela got me it for Christmas if, uh, last last year, and now I'm just like, get it out, give it a little straighten, well, give I, it a flick up top. Well, I was thinking since since you like you survived this ordeal, I might try and grow mine. So mine, I haven't shaved mine for uh, at least four weeks now. It's looking good. Probably, it's got good shape as well. Probably the longest it's ever been. <laughs> um, it just starts to go this that horrible for the listeners. It's like a horrible grey ginger blonde. Nah, man, it's like a silver fox. You got it, man. It looks good. <laughs> That's just the sides, man. So you were saying that at the time, like coming out of it, it's affected you, um, like breathing, like having to do simple tasks. Um, so have they, of of the hospital, gave you any guidelines of you need to steadily get into more exercise or you need to get your lung function better? Or so it's got better because I've started running now. But as I say, it's it's taken. It can take me like. 10 or 11 minutes to do a mile whereas before I was doing it without really thinking about it in eight you know or when I was good less than eight you know so um it makes a, it has made a difference in the way that I can sort of do things from a cardiovascular point of view walking the dogs and you know doing things around the house aren't really a chore anymore um but it's now trying to do something for an extended period of time and build up some level of fitness because honestly um as I said, I've got asthma. When I was doing one of the runs, I was running down a, a country road because I wasn't ready. To, I'm not ready to run in like the forest. I tried it on the first day and I nearly died. So I I, um, I put it on the road instead. And about two days in, I ran past someone who was um, burning stuff in their back garden. Um, and honestly, mate, I, I crawled. It was so bad. It was oh, just the so smoke heavy. just got your lungs. The smoke just got yeah. My... Oh, yeah. That's yeah, it nice. Was just, it was bad because I was already breathing heavy and then I'm like inhaling all the smoke and it was just, it was, it was. We should get, um, we should get you and Deb on because Deb does this breathing technique. Um, oh, that'd be good. Which 
the average human is something silly like 80% of humans don't breathe correctly anyway, which is why we have mm-hmm. such big things like asthma. And the, they also started to say that it could help with this COVID, that if you breathe properly through your lungs, you could actually move it on. Um, okay. So we should get her on and get her to, I'll keep getting her to come on and go for it with me, but we should get her to come on and go for it with you. Um, yeah. It's all to do with like, you have to control your ribs and all, oh, it's weird weird breathing i've done a few breathing techniques like the wim hof method and stuff like that have you ever seen him he does a lot I, of like, I, know the name, but I haven't seen it he does like all the cold water stuff where you're jumping in cold water but he does oh yeah no i know you're talking about yeah yeah he does he does breathing with it um and i feel great after it. i don't know like someone who's got asthma might even you might feel amazing after it um, yeah i'll be done i will hop that up so you um you talked about you want to start getting fit at and you want to start helping out with it so do you have any goals any plans any anything in mind i do actually i've been thinking about it and i also thought it'd be quite interesting from a um a, just a watchable um sort of perspective as well um but i want to challenge the cheer precision method I'm excited. Yeah. So you want me to do build a plan or you want to use some things that are so, on social media or. So, yeah. So it's something I've been playing with before I got ill anyway, but it would be, we've got all these amazing coaches in the UK and it would be really cool just as a personal challenge to myself. Cause I'm not, um, I'm not active as an athlete anymore to kind of pit myself against how they do um, how they approach and getting an athlete fit or you know i've got an idea of trying to get like um, of doing a jump challenge or you know challenging myself to do the tuck again so i've got these ideas of things i would like to do um but the cheer precision approach is the one i want to try and pit myself up against first because i've seen the videos um and they're intense and they're really hard um and so to be able to try and use that as a method to try and get fit again but then also to kind of like a real time um, example of someone who is not fit, trying to get fit using the method that you've put together, I thought would be, um, would be quite, quite good. Yeah, I'm down. I'm, I am in. I could hook you up with um, nutrition advice, the training as loose as you want it to be, because it, it can be strict or it can be loose, but you can get the same sort of results out of it as such. Um, you wouldn't have to go too intense because you're not an athlete. Um, you could train probably just a little bit harder than the general population and get the same sort of re- results. Um, mm-hmm. But the whole concept sounds good, like bear versus the world. <laughs> it's like man versus food. Like man versus food, right? food yeah. Because like, <laughs> then you could, you could do the UK, and then when you've got the success in it, you could reach to, the, to Canada, you could reach to America, and... Yeah. yeah, do it, man. Bear versus the world. I love it. <laughs> be a good little mini right, series gonna on the old We're going to get you on show. ITV. <laughs> Can you imagine? That'll be like, oh, no. No, let's not, let's not do that. Okay, so how, how, do... deep, so how deep do you want to go with me? What do you want from me? I don't want you to take it easy on me. Yeah. Because otherwise, if I don't... I need to... There's an element of me that needs to know I'm getting beaten up a little bit because if I feel like I'm being really pushed or challenged, then I want to try and beat it. If I feel like I've, I've kind of got it in the bag and it's, I know I can do it, then I'm not going to take it as seriously. Whereas if I know that I'm struggling and I'm not, I'm you know walking funny afterwards, then I know that I've I've got something that I want to try and beat or um, step up to. So that's that was the. Um, that was the thinking behind it. You mentioned about running, how far you can run. Would you, you would you like to use that as a measurement, or would you like to use how you look as a measurement, or would you? Um, I think it would be more about. I'm not too worried about the way I look. It's more about the way of, I, I want to be able to feel like I can do things again. The one thing I'm a big advocate of is sleep. You'll find mm-hmm. that you're sleeping better, and that just yeah. opens a whole can of worms to how good you feel like a good yeah. night's sleep compared to a bad night's sleep compared to then how, what food you pick to then how you feel all day to then if you actually go out for that run or you do exercise that like, makes sense yeah. it all it's all one big circle really like you work out you sleep better but also you sleep better you work out better it's this big giant cycle 
Okay, so we could set like, like you just said, what you already run a run in. Yeah, so running, keep Next. running in because I find that's a really good form of me for me to meditate. So definitely keep the running in. Yeah, I do that. Um, I use work, I use walking for that. Yeah, I just I, don't know, I just feel like that's where I get ideas and you, you know. Yeah, I listen so, yeah, to I, really I listen to running. podcasts a lot. But sometimes I'll walk for 30 minutes and be like, I ain't listened to nothing. I've just come up with a new idea. <laughs> I've yeah. not even listened to that. That's, that, that is literally what I use running for. I, I, aside from the fitness, I run. And, I'll, and it, sometimes things just sort of sponta- spontaneously come to you. And you're like, okay, that's what I'm going to go with. That's kind of like how the, um, the home tumble drills came together that I've been putting together on the, um, on the YouTube page. Um, it's just kind of like, well what can I be doing? I've done the shapes. What do I do next? And that was, and it kind of came to me while I was doing the run. I thought, brilliant. That'll be a good one to kind yeah, of... Yeah, uh, viewers and listeners, let's just dip into that while we're here. Um, he has put free, they're free, correct? Yeah, yeah that's right, yeah. Free, free, like, um, home tutorials and drills for tumbling that have never been seen before. Um, using, like, your, your sofas, if your parents are okay with it, don't come for me. Um, and, and equipment <laughs> at home, but it's it's all these new drills you see using top tumblers and crash mats and all this type of equipment we've got in the gyms. He's creating tutorials and exercises to help progress while you're at home in this time, like you would if you'd got these thousands of pounds worth of equipment, but doing it at home. Um, he's also doing a paid service of one-to-one, correct? So you're coaching right, yeah. with these methods. So you can get these methods for free, guys, on uh, YouTube, The Bear Cave. That's right. Yeah. Or you can have him as a paid um, coach, and he puts you through an, an hour. It's half an hour, but they get – we do half an hour, but you also get an evaluation of what you can do the pre-workout, the session, and then homework afterwards. So it's a half an hour class, but collectively uh, it's more than half an hour. The idea behind both the YouTube videos and then the sessions are that ultimately you're not necessarily working. The goal isn't to get you throwing new skills. The goal is to um, master what you have. So for example, if you're working front walk, if you're, you already have your front walkover, it will be a case of tidying up what you have in your front walkover but then introducing the concepts behind a back handspring, for example. So you won't ever be asked to throw a back handspring, but you'll do all the shape work that you need to create the muscle memory to be able to throw um, a back handspring or to be able to start working the back handspring as a whole when you return to your gym and your coaches. Well, like we went so through, I'm really excited by it. It's perfect. I'm excited by it too because it's perfect because it's the whole what's coming into the UK and also in America is the drills. Um, and we have our little slogan here, Drills for Skills. Um, is it BG you use that slogan? Drills for Skills? It, it's yeah. kind of, it's, it's, not, it's more of a, a collective one. It's, it's kind of used by loads of tumble coaches. Yeah. But I follow the hashtag on Instagram. It's used by everyone. Boxers use it. Um, footballers yeah. use it. It's, it's kind of a, co- a collective uh, hashtag. It, it's, it's great that you don't want people just throwing a backhand swing. Because trust me, I did mm. that when I first... I was a free runner and that's why I suffered for 15 years trying to back handspring because I just <laughs> threw a back handspring. Um, and there was it's no the trampolines that are the one who's trying to encourage people to move away from trampolines a little bit and, and focus on the actual shape. Yeah. When they come into the gym, they're like, oh, coach, I've done my back tuck. And you're like, go on then. No, on a trampoline. No, back here. <laughs> on a trampoline. You're like, well, that, that's completely different. I turn the floor. No, it's completely different. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i'm i'm loving i'm loving this series so guys um go check it out on youtube the bear cave and then get at him he very 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 good quality of value for money um with mr bear drills thank you <laughs> um so moving back onto the fitness side of things how long should you do four weeks this challenge i'm 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 four ready sounds I'm good four weeks Four weeks, um, and yes. we will. We, I won't go into nutrition too much. We'll just. I, I will. I'll give you some things to think about. So it's not like here's a nutrition plan, like because we're not going for like how you look. Yes, nutrition will help you feel better, but mm-hmm. I want you to get to the end of it and say it was the training and the yep. apl- application of the, the the minor things that you've put in that has got you your 
feeling better, sleeping better, longer distance run, not change everything all in one go. Mm -hmm. um, after the challenge, if you want me to help with nutrition, we can do that. But I'll just give you a few pointers that I say to people. I hate telling people what to eat, man. Like, <laughs> we're, you're an adult. I'm not going to tell you what to eat. Like, <laughs> I know what I shouldn't be eating, but that's, that's the problem, mate. I still eat it. <laughs> all, all, all I do is, is I'll, I'll tell you like a few like guideline and brackets and you start to mm -hmm. learn what works for you. Because some people are high fat. And that's, that's not just because high fat's great. Some people are high fat because they perform better high fat. Mm -hmm. Some people are high carb. That's because they perform better high carb. Some people, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Like, it's what works for you. And if I think I, my problem is I just eat too much carb. There's just too much carb. Yeah, so you, you burn out very easily. But like I say, some people can go completely no carb. And they're like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm great. Whereas mm -hmm. you take your carbs away from me and I go... <laughs> And you've got no yeah. chance of getting me to do anything. <laughs> I'm the same. Um, I'm absolutely the same, mate. It will give guidelines. And maybe over this four weeks, you'll start to work out. Because you'll know. You'll know, like, I've had this for breakfast. And that was really hard today. Is it because of recovery? Or is it because maybe yesterday I had something that was high fat? And that was better for me. Do you know what I mean? So the guidelines help you work your own nutrition out. What's good for you? Because I ain't you. I'm not you at all. You're you. <laughs> um, and then we'll put, would you, what do you think of the free tutorial videos on YouTube? Because they're only like singular exercises. So would you like to build yourself from there? Or would you want me to build you a program to follow? Because I can put everything onto, I've got my own app on your phone. You download the Cheer Precision app. And mm -hmm. once the program's in there, you get, you can track your nutrition. You can track your training. You can talk to me. You can um, upload, you can track your steps, so you can attach your Fitbit and stuff to it, um, all in the one app. So we can do that. We'll do that anyway. Yeah, let's, we'll do that anyway. Okay. But then okay, also, sounds good. do you want to build your own program with the, the free tutorials? What might be interesting is just to see, because I know what I would do in the same way that I know what I would do if I was working with an athlete. But it's always good to see what other people are doing, because sometimes I see, I, you know, I watch videos of, I know, tumble development drills, and I'll be like, epiphany, light bulb moment. So it'd be really cool to see some of the things that you would do, because obviously it would help me anyway, but it would help me in loads of different you know, perspectives, because I'll be thinking, well, that's what Sam did when I was trying to work on my leg power. So let's try this here when I'm working leg power with this person. So I think it could have like a, a nice knock on as well. So it would be interesting to see some of the things that you would do, and then put that into um, uh, like a, I don't know, a curriculum for that week. And then after that, I'll start trying to put them together myself as well. So that I've kind of got like, I'm learning from what you've done and then putting it into something else. But well, every, everything's um, on, the, everything's on the, the free, like the YouTube tutorials. Yes, and yeah, those, those are have the same sort of concept what I work with because I love mobility. I love mm -hmm. moving and feeling well. And then it comes to the smashing you and getting you f like that way. I'm, I'm happy that you move and feel better. You then can work mm -hmm. harder. Um, yeah. But yeah, we'll put your program together. We'll keep it because it's only you're four. really big on dynamic work, aren't you? Like one of like, um, yeah. so in the, with the cheer precision program, which is why I was so attracted to it and wanted to test myself against it. It's the dy dy the dynamic approach to the way that you're doing things. It's not sort of static work. It's, it's constant movement. Because yes, you talk about range and flexibility, but then with flexibility, building power on top of that and, and the fitness that, that goes with it. So yeah, that's why I really wanted to try it. Yeah, so, so what it is, if you're stiff, if you're like hella stiff, you're not going to transfer, like you're not going to turn your strength and explosiveness into power if you're stiff. Um, so like you'll probably see it a lot of the time, it's shoulders and hips that are tight. So the hips are stopping the glutes firing. So then it looks like they've got a bad shape, but it's because they don't know how to fire their glutes. So then the hips have gone tight. So you stretch the hips That's up, teach them to fire their hip, their glutes up, and you're like, oh, that back handspring looks beautiful now. <laughs> I actually find the same thing in, um, I was actually going to talk about the back handspring. When, for example, I'm really, you know, I really want the head to stay still or as still as possible when athletes are learning skills. So when people throw back handsprings and they throw their heads, 
they, they arch the lower part of their back to try and get over because they've thrown their head and it means their legs don't work as hard and that's why you get those kind of undercutting back handsprings. Whereas if the athlete keeps their head still and fully engages into that athletic position and pushes their hips back, when they do actually project through their legs, they can create the maximum power from that because their hips aren't kind of undermining what the legs are trying to do. So totally on board with you there about the hips. If the hips are in the right place, the, the power is just so much better. Great little tip. So you do this in squatting and you do it in deadlifting too, um, which mm -hmm. a lot of the public get wrong as well as athletes, is which we, which is probably good to say how to generate the power in a back handspring and et cetera, is mm -hmm. not to push the hips forward, but to push the ground away with their feet. Mm -hmm. And that actually worked with me because I used to snap with my lower back and it was like trying yeah. to, I was trying to get glutes, glutes, lower back, glutes, lower back. And then yeah. it's like, well, you can't push the ground away without engaging and throw, uh, thrusting your hips forward. You can't get that. Yeah. So thought of pushing the ground away, then it just engages it all without even overthinking it. So, so there's um, on, on the back handspring video, there's a, there's a couple of examples about how you can do that uh, and, and work on engaging your hips. And one of them is when you're sitting on the floor and you've got the sofa behind you, um, and you've got your arms, they can be in front of you or by your ears. And what you do is you snap onto the top half of your sofa so that your shoulders lift onto the sofa, but you're squeezing and lifting your hips. So that's quite a good way to isolate that from home. Whereas at the gym, you'd probably do it with a mat laying on the floor and then you'd snap and lift onto the mat. But the sofa does it quite well because it's got height, which means you're lifting into a height, which might make it even more useful than the way that you would, you would do it at the gym. So... Um, just like, like, a, quite... like a glute bridge, like you do if you were yeah. in, not doing cheerleading, but like a glute bridge yeah. with the, the arms, which then obviously puts more extension and puts it more into that position for the back handspring. I'm loving the use of the glute bridge right now. <laughs> I'm doing one leg ones as well. One leg glute bridges. Every, brilliant. Ev every client starts their program or continues the whole time with glute bridges because we sit down I look forward to it <laughs> we sit down far too much yeah so as humans we sit down and that leads to back pain knee pain feet alignment out shoulders wonky heads sitting to the side just because we sit our hips go tight glutes don't work and then a whole load of just not good stuff comes out of it um so yeah, glute bridge is 100%, even if it's not just for strength, if it's to stretch, like, I said, like you said, uh, like the, activity, the actively moving through positions, not just statically stretching, the glute bridge mm -hmm. is one straight away because an athlete could have that where they can't fully extend their hips because they're tight, the hips are so tight. So you, the glute bridge is, that's another active, you're stretching at the same time because you're stretching the hips as you mm -hmm. activate the glutes. Um, so it's Everything's connected. Another great mobility, it's just, you say mobility, but it doesn't have to be stretching. It can be just normal movement patterns, um, mm -hmm. which as humans, we should be able to do. So are you going to vlog this or are you going to document this somehow? Yeah. So what I was going to do is we're going to kind of piece these together as like a, a mini series, I think would be a good way to do it. So if we do, if, if we start with this one as our kind of, this is what's going to happen. And then we'll finish with a longer one in say, four weeks time so we've got the coffee with sam part a coffee with the sam end point and then in between I'll, i'm going to do like a weekly update i, I guess where i kind of collect the, you just, the workouts you just invited them. yourself back on my podcast you just invited yourself, have you just invited yourself back on my podcast <laughs> well i believe that all stories should have an ending <laughs> so i think it's very important that i come back on in four weeks time to finish the story <laughs> all right, big shot I'll have, I'll have you on if i want you on <laughs> well no. i just think it'll be really good for you to, for, for everyone to see the end product of the cheer precision impact oh, that's all love it love it yeah <laughs> so you're gonna have a four weeks vlog series so you're gonna vlog everything yeah mm -hmm. what i'd say is i will have a phone call once a week mm -hmm. and you can video the phone call if you've got and a, we'll record that too yeah camera you can video the phone call when i give you a call the external camera yeah. or laptop or whatever you do for your vlog um yeah to catch up what's not working if any 
you've got any injury like knee pains coming in or whatever you need to knock back on running or knock back on certain exercises because obviously it's a four weeks so it's your body's gonna be a bit like ah um so things some things that some people get knee pain with that we can normally come away from and we can try and fix it we're not going to be able to because we've only got four weeks um yeah so we'll have a phone call once a week so we'll have four phone calls and then yeah we'll get you on a part back on a podcast part b in a month's time brilliant and well, hopefully it won't be you it'll be me hopefully i'll be able to push through and get get it done so um you can yeah, have your money I'm back i <laughs> <laughs> look forward to it no, mate, no, no we got this we're gonna smash it i'm excited yeah i will i'll get all that put together for you um i'm excited and if you haven't worked hard enough, you've got to shave your beard off. Oh, man. I feel like that's a deal. I feel like if, you're, if you haven't worked hard enough, and I can, if you're like, I can tell, because you log everything in the app. You log that you've done a workout. If you miss a workout, that's not working hard enough. So you miss oh, a workout. Okay. Oh, I don't know. I can't really love my beard. All right. Challenge accepted. Yes. So, listeners, if you haven't seen Bear Joe's beard, go on to his page. Go on to his page. <laughs> and find this on YouTube, and it's a colossal, like Viking beard. So it's took him some time. It's even survived COVID. So if he has to cut it <laughs> it's off, got a lot of going on. Length and girth and everything to it. So if he has to cut it off, it's pretty devastating for him. So you need to keep tuned the next four weeks. So where <laughs> will the where will the vlogs be posted? Will they be on? your bear cave or will they be on a new youtube channel so what i'll do i'm going to it's going to be like part of a playlist on um the the bear cave youtube page um but what i'll do is because when you're creating a playlist you can use what other people have um put on their own youtube channels um, i'll make sure that yours is the starting point so what we've done today the conversations that we've had that will be the starting point and then, but that will still be on your page, obviously. And then yeah. we'll just document what, what I'm doing until we get to the last one in four weeks time. When so, yeah, we'll I will be up. saying to you, the beard stays. Yes. Hashtag the beard stays. <laughs> so Perfect. it is the 22nd, Friday the 22nd of May. So yep. we're going to start like Monday. Yep. Absolutely, I'm ready. I've just put that as a hashtag, the beard stays, mate. Hashtag the beard stays. So you can get yeah. you can get some people behind you and I'll become a villain in all of this. <laughs> Maybe we can have precision beast the bear. <laughs> or the bear beast precision. <laughs> the jigsaw. I need, ah, I, need, I need to have I need yeah, to have like a jigsaw. jigsaw. I need to have a jigsaw from Saw made dono but smiling. <laughs> Hello bear, do you wanna play a game? Do you want, do you want to play a game? <laughs> Yeah, do you want to play? Maybe that's the trailer. If you haven't seen it, guys, so my logo is a jigsaw. His is a bear. Jigsaw is a character from a movie who plays dangerous games with people. And he says, "Do you want to play a game?" So, do you want to play a game? Get fit or lose your beard. Yes, I do. Jigsaw versus the bear. The beard stays. All right. I'm excited. I will get the plans. I'll get the plans drawn up, sent over to you. We'll get you set up on the app. Um, I'll try and get them over to you over the weekend so you can mess around and you can get inside the hub because there's a lot. There's a lot I can send you, but there's also a lot you can do yourself. So you can make your own nutrition plans in there, and it can okay. tell you. It can tell you how much protein you're eating, carbs, all stuff like that. Um, I can send you. What I'll do is I'll send you guidelines, so then you just see how you hit it. And then our weekly chats, we can you can say, well, I'm struggling to keep this down. I'm struggling to keep that up. What can how can we fix that? Um, okay. Try and change that around. Then I can your program will be in there. And like I say, just to get used to it. Like I do have videos that show you how to use it, but it, it it's quite simple. But it's just getting used to logging it, and because then when you log, it tells me, so it pings okay. up on my system. Bear drills. Rob has logged a workout check it out type thing he has logged his nutrition he has done this many steps today so it tells me everything you're doing um, okay. so we'll get you set up on that on the weekend and we'll start your challenge on monday i'm excited the beard stays honestly i'm loving it <laughs> i'm excited 
So if you want to get to Rob, if you want to see Rob, as in his tutorials, and you want, he does a, so much free help, guys, on Instagram and on YouTube. Um, but if you want his in-depth help and you want to see his big bearded face on your screens helping you out, then get, do they go to your website? Do they DM you? How, how does it work? What, for one-to-ones? One-to-ones, yeah. So one-to-ones, um, it's just an email to um, uh, beardrills at gmail.com uh, and then uh, we, can, we can piece something together f uh, from there. That, as I say, there's been, we've done quite a few and they, they, they've been really popular and the feedback's been good. Um, so um, I'm looking forward to doing a few more. Got bookings for next week. So yeah, they're coming along really nice. Awesome. So get 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 uh, 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 Rob. Get at Rob. I can't even speak. It's that exciting. <laughs> get to Rob for the one to ones, all the free tutorials. Also, my free tutorials, which link with Rob's on uh, Cheer Precision on YouTube too. I want to send you massive love through the internet for surviving COVID because I you. I couldn't live without you. Um, <laughs> So Likewise. listeners, listeners, viewers, if you want to send him your love for surviving this, then do it. Yes. Un Unindicting <laughs> with heart <laughs> and loves. Do it, please, for me, because that will annoy him. Rob hates <laughs> being love, loved. Mate. Rob hates <laughs> being loved. Um, <laughs> yeah, another great episode. Um, it was awesome speaking to you. And I will see you, well, I'll speak to you next week for our first check-in. But the viewers and the listeners will have you back on the Coffee with Sam podcast in four weeks' time. Where you're going to be running. Very scared. You're going to be running <laughs> like O'Farrah. <laughs> Other runners Maybe are not. available. <laughs> Peace, Roberto. Much love, Take care. Man.